All right. Okay. Whenever you're ready. Good afternoon. My name is Ben Strife. I'm David Schwager. I'm Laura Sprinkle. I'm Jackson Sawyer. And I'm Trey Shelton. And we are Trek Together. Today we want to start off with a video aired by Expedia. As many of you know, Expedia is a booking agency for flights and hotels, but we recognize some similarities between the problems that they identified in this video and the problems that we're solving. I actually have a lot of money to vacation days, but where am I going to go? I just don't have the money to travel right now. Paris, so I can't exactly go globe trotting. I have friends to go with that gal, but I normally travel by myself. Someday. There are no more excuses. Find the hotel you want and the flight you want, and we'll find the savings to get you there. So in this video, we learn about this individual that has the time and desire to travel, but she doesn't have anybody to travel with. Therefore, she postpones her trip. In Trek Together, we are committed to helping people like her. Trek Together is an all-in-one social media website where we help the travelers that don't have a partner and are beginners at travelers and aren't very experienced. So, some features in our website is you can travel with other users, uh, post travel information and recommendations, rate and review travel destinations and partners. Our customer segment is anybody the age of 18 to 35, kind of like a college age, like in college, out of college, um, active on social media because we are a social media website and since we're talking about like traveling with people from the internet, you have to be reliable on social media, so we want a large social media presence. And we basically found two main competitors, those being Travelers Meet and Travel Buddies. Um, Travelers Meet was a very basic, it didn't have all three key components that we had into Trek together. It was just the pairing of the travelers, and it only asked for basic information, such as your name and basic information for just a beginning of a profile, and then we didn't feel it had a large enough customer base to really find anyone that you really wanted to travel with. And then Travel Buddies had more, it, was, it had the partner system, but then it also had the, um, where you could share your experiences, but it didn't feel as much as like a social media website where you really got to know who you're talking with, and it didn't feel like you could really it was difficult to um, go from one page to the next and really communicate with people. Oh, and then Facebook, we also used Facebook to reach our customer segment, um, where we also use this to advertise on a lot, to get them to our landing page, and to get lots of page views so people would be um, familiar with what Truck Together was. And as Jackson touched on, uh, we used Facebook a lot for our advertising. And uh, we set a budget, a daily budget of about $5 per day, which would get us an estimated 5 to 19 clicks per day. Um, and we set the boundaries of who we were going to advertise to based on their interests, such as social media, backpacking, friends, leisure, and shopping, fashion, um, just to narrow down the people that we were targeting. Uh, we were able to get uh, six, we were able to reach 66,000 people in uh, about 27 days of advertising. Um, so we only spent $135, uh, and we got uh, 220 people to our website from there. Uh, and our total addressable market was about 130 million people. Uh, that is the people who are traveling in, within the United States, uh, adults who use social media. And then uh, for our SAM, we uh, narrowed that down to about 35 million people, uh, travelers ages 18 to 34, so in college, just out of college, wanting to travel, but uh, don't necessarily have somebody to go with. And then uh, they frequently use social media. 
So for our MVP, we used a website that we made. Um, we were getting people to our website with our Facebook advertising, but we realized that we weren't getting a whole lot of subscribers at first because our advertising was taking them to our Facebook page where they'd have to click on the link from there and then bring us to our page. So we directed the link to take us directly, or take whoever clicked on directly to our page, and it take them here where we have a little blurb um, about what we do and who we are. If they scroll down, they end up finding a more detailed explanation of who we are and what we want to do. And they can sign up here. What's the website? Um, it's tracktogether.squarespace.com. So for our MVP, our main refer was Facebook, and we were averaging, once we started getting people directly to our website, mm -hmm. about 2 to 10 page views per day, and we had about 110 views this month. So for our MVP overall, Facebook was not the best way to reach our customer segment, because even though we were getting a lot of people um, to come to our website, we weren't getting as much people actually subscribing as we wanted. So we need to drive even more traffic to our website, but try and narrow down more precisely the age range we're looking at more. Did you use income at all? Um, Never mind. I, I can save that question. Okay. okay. So um, moving on to our revenue, we decided that we're going to make money through advertising just because we're looking at our competitors and then we saw that they're not charging anything. So we figured, you know, why would we um, charge money? Because if you see something that's free and it's something that you have to pay like $10 a month for, you'd probably go towards a free um, product or service. And we decided we would um, charge $30 um, for like every thousand people that you get to your website. Just because um, through our Facebook, we're paying um, $5 to get like, you know, 10 people to each page. So like. We spend about $150 a month and we get like roughly you know, 300 people, that's what we're supposed to get. And then we, after doing some research, we figured that, um, that big companies are willing to pay to advertise. You know, People that always go to Super Bowl commer commercials and are paying millions of dollars. And then we figured that this would be a you know, good number just uh, <clears throat> like to charge some companies. And then going to our uh, five year revenue, um, our first year, first two years, we don't really do as much just because we have to get people to our website and then get them to go um, to whoever we advertise to. So, and then with our SG&A costs, our first year it's $11,000 and we're not really making as much our first year. But then after um, year three, we, start, we really start to hit it off. We're, um, we're getting more people to our website, we're getting more customers, and then we're, and then we're sending them off to um, to other websites. For example, so we match up people to travel together and then after they found their travel companion, then we like recommend Orbit or Expedia or whoever to um, to book a hotel or book a flight or etc. And then our SGA costs, they consist of um, insurance such as liability, property, cyber insurance, and then we have a website fee that we have to pay each month just to keep it up and running. Uh, we also have advertising that's going to be a huge key component to um, how we run just because in order, in order for us to work we actually have to get the customers first and then so we have to spend an enormous amount on advertising. We also have um, IT, we, we figure we spend 25% of our revenue on that just because we are like we're pretty much all, um, you know, all technology, all website and then everything. We have no cost just because we don't have um, we don't have like a product or service that we're actually like developing. Um, and then our salaries, we won't be we could take something out of year three. However, it might affect like our budget of like how much we spend. So we decided that we um, take out salaries for year four and year five. Um, year four, we take out a total of fifty thousand, so it'd be ten thousand each. And then year five, we take out 125,000, so it'd be 25,000 each. And then going to our uses of capital. So basically, we did some research online, went to a bunch of different websites, and then the average cost to start up our business for web development is $35,000. And then we figured we have legal fees such as you know like trademark, um, you know just just startup legal fees. And then our maximum cumulative loss would just be um, $4,820 because. 
our first year it's not going to hit off as good, but then after that we're going to start developing. And our liquidity cushion, it'd just be 6820 just because, you know, just in case something goes wrong, if you want to advertise more to get out to more people. So our total lease of capital will come out to roughly $47,000. Um, and then our exit strategy, we decided we'd pick year three. Um, we have an exit multiple of five, uh, money multiple two, discount, just because, you know, um, just because we're a startup program, we don't really have any, anything like fully developed, so it could be a little risky. So we decided to do 60000 for our discount rate and an IRR 26.1%. However, if we were to can you continue on to year five, uh, as you saw from the five year model chart, it, our revenue increases a lot just because we're going to be well known, we're going to be advertising out to a, a lot more people, and it's just going to be, we're going to be making a lot more profit. So an exit strategy of year five would be very beneficial. And then we are willing to exchange 51% uh, of the company for $47,740. And we hope you come trek with us. <laughs>
checking in more recently, the app is a lot newer, and they have, or they seem to have a lot more people starting to come in just are, over this year. Are you familiar with Airbnb? Yeah. Okay, did you track or did you do any benchmarking on them because they have a similar problem and they have taken the world by storm? Is it something you could learn from? Or couch surfing are familiar with that as yeah. an industry? That's who you're targeting here. You're targeting people that are willing to take some risk, and there's there's a massive industry out there. You should try to understand how they're getting by some of the safety issues, and they do have some um, qualifications. One of them is Facebook, that they have a Facebook account you can track who they are. I, I would encourage you to look at Airbnb and, and couch serving as, as an industry. Yeah, because what what's going to happen here is this. I'm going to sign up for this. I'm going to travel to Tahiti, and someone's going to say on my profile. Well, he snores, you know, he doesn't shower every day, and, um, you know, he just can't get the food in his mouth. It gets everywhere. So now I've got, I've got this profile out there that I've got no, no real interest in further participating. In fact, I'd rather bury my head in the sand because that's not going to be very much fun. eBay does a pretty good job at that, where it's a positive and negative, and it doesn't allow you to opine. I think you get, like, 50 digits yeah. in there. So it really shrinks that, but that, that helps that. Um, you know, I'm wondering like, well, why you're not a dating site, quite frankly. I mean, you're kind of that, right? You're going to take a risk. And is this risk going to be over lunch, or is it going to be over you know, three weeks you know, in, you know, in the Amazon? Uh, I don't know. It's risk. <laughs> but it, it's risk. But, but to, to Greg's point, you can the find your way through that. The industry's already formed. Yeah. Risk has been taken care of. You can check another you just one. You've got to figure out. Meal sharing is another one where they share meals. People come into your home, and they have to vet that. So the industry is growing here with the security concerns. You just need to figure it out. Would you do me a favor, um, Ben? Would you go back to your numbers page uh, on how you? I thought it was forty-seven grand or something. How are you breaking that out? Oh, you use the capital. Yeah. Right there. Right there. Uh, back there. You go. So, um, legal fees. I get it. You're probably low on that. Um, add a zero. It, uh, yeah, add a zero. Web development, where where'd you come up with that number? I don't this is constructive, by the way, guys, because you've got something here. Right? I'm not sure of the actual website, but we've been to um, a bunch of you know different websites like build my app, and then there's been one that's like you know develop my uh, my website, and we've like we type we put in like the stuff that we require, like we took out things that like we don't necessarily need for a website. But we install like things like okay, you need like a sign in, you need a profile, you need to upload like a picture, or, like a matching system. So we put in all that we need, and then it just shot out a number like some of them was thirty thousand, some thirty five, some forty. So we just took like an average of that, and we got thirty five thousand. Okay, because so a little bit like the other the data thing, you yeah. you guys are a database. Yeah, I mean you you might actually on the side of that be a travel log, but you're a database. So you collect the data on people that want to travel and where they want to travel to. And once you have that data, you know, the fact that you get to find a buddy to travel with is great, but there's also another big play here in taking that data and lining up products that are lined up with the types of travel they like to do. If they want to go to, the, to Brazil or to the Amazon, what are the things that they would need to buy along with that? And it's another it's a different model, but it's also, you got that data, that's rich stuff. And I'm wondering if there are any other. Yeah, along those lines, since you're really doing an advertising model for your revenue, right? So the key to that is eyeballs and, and stickiness on the site. You need as many people to come as often as possible to your site and stay on it for as long in order to attract advertisers and get paid for it. So besides, once you build a profile, what are the other compelling reasons to keep coming back to your site? so that you can actually build up this database that makes it valuable to an advertiser. Yeah, and the site's cool. I mean, yeah, it's right. cool. It's, well, what, else can, what else can you do on the site? If once you build your profile, you're in, now what's the reason to go back? Well, so, really, that's where the social media aspect kind of comes in. It's, you know, it's a little bit like Facebook where you can communicate with people, talk about travel experiences, and kind of ask for advice on traveling. Like a forum? Yeah. A, a forum board mm -hmm. type thing. Did you ever could consider, um, I'm just thinking along the lines of Car the point that Cara is making, is giving people a reason to come back, um, value, adding value to the experience. These are 
people who like to travel looking for reasons to, would you ever do either a quarterly event trip or something of that nature? where you get in a, an airlines to sponsor um, a key trip, a hotel, you, and you package it, um, and then people travel. Like, yeah. Is there any value? You got the data on where they want to go, how many want to go, and you can just, you might be in the tour business. Yeah, my concern is if you if the heart of your website is is a social, you know, inter, interchange, I, I'm afraid that that's like competing with Twitter and Facebook. Because that's where people are going to go. Gonna, if they're on their phone, they're going to go to Instagram or one of their favorite. They're not going to go to a website to socialize with people. So you need to give another reason other than, you know, that's unique. And that's why I think it's a good idea to consider events or other reasons to get them to come to your website. Because they can't get that information anywhere else. And that's new and constantly changing. Were, were there things, Carl, that you did when you were building your product that... I mean, because everyone's going to chase a low fare airfare. Right. But if there was a competition, what? How? How, how did you try well, to separate the, yourself? Uh, so one of the type of things you do is is uh, we built a a price alert. We were one of the first to do that. So we would go out and tell people when a price was changing, which would cause people to come back to the site. Well, yeah. Yeah. You gotta go. Gotta go check the fare again. Yeah. So you know, there's many ways, but you're you have to can't lose sight of what your goal is. It's eyeballs as often as possible. Otherwise, your advertisers aren't going to want to have a reason to be, be and then your revenue model falls apart. Yeah. So you really got to think that through. That's a beautiful thing. Ben, go two, go one, two, one step further. One. You're clearly on to something here. I mean, you have got something that people are doing now that they didn't do before the digital economy. Mm -hmm. Identifying that risk, that um, element that, um, that Greg talked about on how people get protected in this, getting more eyes on it the way Carr described, and um, in, in figuring out the limiting the five or six other ways you can make money outside of just this because there's if you get the data you can do a lot of it. you might you might actually think about doing something similar to what size me up is doing and develop a widget that goes on like an airbnb site or some of these other sites that are already established and have the eyeballs and you know and, and then the data they collect the data in your widget so you have your own private database that you own um, and, and relook at it that way, and maybe do a subscription model. I don't know, but but you know that's another mm -hmm. way to take it. Uh, good job, great job. Good job. Do you want to get your list? Yeah. Kazi, I'm Luke Paterno. I'm Jackie Batliner. I'm Anthony Getzelius. I'm Robert Sinatra. Advancements in technology has been changing every aspect of life. Back in the day. When you're commuting to work, you have on your Walkman, just living, loving the music, everything's all good. And also, if you wanted to go somewhere new, you pull out a map, and on this map you find it. But now, since the technology advancements, you do this all on your phone. So why is not this hit the teen job market? Why do we still have to use old techniques such as turning in paper applications, <laughs> hearing from friends about jobs? At Barrington High School, if you want to find a job, either you have to know someone, or you have to go to the job where that 95% of people don't even know exists and read 50 pieces of paper squinting to see what it says. That's why we're looking for the solution. And we found it, our app FastPass. I want to walk you through it. You'd log in here, and then you'd have a news feed. And on this news feed, you could filter results by type of work, location, pay, posting date. Then you can have your resume already on file. You can favorite. Uh, jobs, so if you want to come back to it, if you don't want to apply right there and then. Then we have a map, and on this map it shows exactly the location of these jobs and job opportunities. And we're still keeping our original idea of having <coughs> odd jobs and having adults in the community posting one-time jobs. So the price we've listed, you can see the black indicates the uh, adults and the red is uh, businesses. And then once you click on a job opportunity, you can see uh, there's a job description, hours, shift, pay. Oh. Keep going. Go. Yeah, just relax. 
That's a hugs issue. Yeah, hugs. Give oh. you self is yeah. small. <laughs> and then directly from here, you can hit apply. And also, we a marketing strategy is we want them to share that they applied and they use our app to find a job. So you can spread the word through your friends. So why would businesses use fast tests? We're trying to cut their hiring period in half. Also limiting costs for smaller community-based businesses that don't have enough money to spend on bigger hiring and uh, job opportunity uh, applications. And also we're putting them into a very difficult market to reach. We're putting them right in front of high schoolers, which is a untouched market. So now this leads us to our competitors. Our two main competitors right now are Snagajob and HireTeam. They are two websites which help people find jobs. Snagajob is basically for anyone looking for a job and they can uh, find jobs based on their skill set and what they want to do. HireTeam is more for teens, which is similar to us. Um, however, when we visited these two websites, we realized they were very difficult to maneuver and the subpages were confusing, there was too much going on. So we want to revolutionize the way teens find jobs by making an app that they can have whenever, wherever they are, so they can find the job of their need. Now the thing that sets us apart is it is an app and we want to bring the community together one job and task at a time. Not only does it help the teens, but for the businesses, it'll cut down their hiring great hiring period and thus giving them more employees. So this is all great, but at the end of the day, we need customers. So we managed to calculate that our total addressable market is around 30 million people. So this is adults and businesses both, so there would be businesses that specifically hire teenagers, as well as busy adults with dual working families who would need this to help them out in their day-to-day -day lives for the odd jobs. And then, of course, we're startup, only five people. We can't handle 30 million people. So we want to narrow it down solely to Illinois for the first couple of years. So we figured out our serviceable, addressable market to be around 1.2 million people. Now for our marketing plan for the high schooler. What's a better way to contact a high schooler than social media? As my parents say, I'm glued to my phone all the time. So Facebook ads, sponsored tweets. Also, we want to target high school guidance counselors so they can refer to use our app to find jobs. Also, high school events, local hangouts, and job fairs, we'll put up an info booth to show them. And then our business marketing plan. We've been currently setting up meetings and e making emails and calls. Also, we're planning on going to trade shows and uh, also talking with town chambers. Now for the adults, also since we're, it's a new era, social media is big, we're gonna use Facebook and Twitter, also town hall flyers, and then magazines, local mag community magazines and newspapers. Uh, for our MVP, we started off by creating a landing page. We got a few hundred views at first, um, and then we realized that we weren't getting enough views and people weren't staying on our page very long. So then we added an explainer video. Uh, this kind of helped to uh, explain our business better and then we realized a lot more people were staying on our uh, website. And uh, after we put that up, as of now, we have over 850 uh, website views. And then after we finished that, we started creating a list of kids who would be willing to download our app and get it started when we are. And we have over 70 kids that go to this school that have willingly uh, said that they would do our uh, service. Uh, also, we ran a few tasks at the beginning of the MVP stage. Uh, we realized with that, though, with the one-time tasks, we're not going to be making a lot of revenue off that. So we decided we were going to add the local businesses as a new customer segment. So, I mean, having 70 kids to work for you is all good and all. But where are they going to work? You need businesses. Thus, we, we reached out to many businesses. We started over. We started around uh, a lot of uh, large commercialized businesses like Jewel and Walmart and Mariano's. But we realized we, we forgot the meaning of our company. We're a community. We love our community, and we want to be there for our community. So we went to lo local places like Egg Harbor and uh, local uh, country clubs. And that gave us one of our biggest negotiations we've had, the WGA -E -E -S -E -F -S the uh, Western Golf Association, Evan Scholarship Foundation, which is a fascinating abbreviation for some reason. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> it doesn't work that way for some reason. Uh, no, but they own all the country clubs in northern Illinois, over 210 of them. And 
well, what's the main job that a kid can have at a country club? Caddy. I mean, they take it very seriously there, and they, they it takes, and we realize that it takes a long time for them to hire their caddy, caddies. And our main goal is to cut that time in half. And we have over 17 businesses ready to go that are all willing to pay for our service and all excited for us to get it all started. So what it comes down to is the money. So we set up three pricing options. We have the professional option. This is targeted towards the businesses, and this is a subscription. So they pay $25 a month, and they get unlimited access to post on our app. Um, they would get an email version of all su submitted resumes, and they could track everything and post as many times as they want. Then we have an at-home option, which is mainly for the busy adults who want to just post one odd job, and that would be four bucks. And then we have the at work option, and that's twenty dollars. And this is again for the businesses, but the ones who don't want to commit to a subscription and just have maybe like one, one job for a certain season or something, and they want to post it one time for a thirty day period, they can pay twenty dollars to do that. So then uh, we laid out some of our major expenses for our business. So a major one is marketing, and that's fifteen percent. We decided that since this is an app, and the way we make money is through our customers, it's really important to market, obviously. We also have IT, 25%, that would be to maintain servers, make sure everything runs smoothly and efficiently. And then we have a $3,000 legal fee and insurance fee. And this would be simple trademarking and making sure everything is in place and nothing is, uh, there's no hiccups in our company. So then we calculated our five year revenue and profit. We found in the first year we'd make around $17,000. And then by the fifth year we'd make $443,000. So this drastic growth is by uh, location. So the first couple of years we want to stay, you know, Barrington, surrounding cities, and then eventually keep growing and growing. And uh, we would do this through the marketing in these areas. So we might start off marketing to Barrington and then Schaumburg and stuff, and we'd increase our radius and keep going until we market towards all of Illinois. So uh, what we want from you guys. So we set up a breakdown of our cost. $15,000 app development fee, $100 one-time app store fee, and marketing initial $5,000 to get us up and off the ground. So that makes our startup total $20,000, $20,100. We also have a liquidity cushion and maximum cumulative loss, making our total sources of capital $34,000, and that would be for 34.6% of our company. Along with this, we also have an initial rate of return of 37.2% and a money multiple of 2.4 times. So in conclusion, we have around 70 kids and 17 businesses ready to go. They're all very excited and willing to pay for our service. And now we're just waiting for our app development and the investment, investment opportunity to come. So deferring from a financial standpoint, I mean, think of, it, think of it as investing in your local community. Think of it as investing in a local kid that needs help finding a job, as my friend Luke said. He said, there, we have to go to some job board that 95% of us don't even know. We have to go there and look at all these sheets and it would be so much easier if a kid just go on his app, which I get either way on his phone all day, let's be honest. And then, I mean, and then he can find a job. There are seasonal jobs, there are all sorts of jobs he can do. And don't think of it as an investment in a company, think of it as an investment in your community and the kids. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you. Any questions? <laughs>
you know, how many customers are you going to be um, selling for that first year to make so that much money? We, we found out, well, throughout the year we'd be expanding, which which really helped with us. Well, we have to start small, so we're starting off in Barrington and eventually throughout the, throughout the community, throughout other communities like Arlington Heights or Palatine or Hoffman Estates. And the way the financial model is set up right now is that it only has this $25 subscription figured in because that's our primary goal to get the subscription. That's where we make the most money. So we'd actually be making a little bit more, marginally more than the numbers you saw taking these two into consideration. So the students don't pay to the host. No, no. Those are corporate. Yeah. yeah it's corporate. That's a lot of companies at twenty-five dollars a month that you've got to sell to to even get to that first-year revenue. Um, so, what's your sales plan? I guess to get—I mean, it's a great start for golf clubs. That was a real win. Mm -hmm. You know, that was awesome. Yeah. That, uh, but you're going to need more than just caddying jobs, mm -hmm. and you're going to need a lot more companies to hit that revenue target. So. Okay. Uh, so what we went out for our MVP, this is kind of what we tried to confirm, is we went out and we just called up managers or CEOs of these local businesses and met with them one on one. And we explained them our idea and we ended up giving them a sheet saying, you know, if this is something that you'd be willing to pay for and something you would use if we develop, can you just sign this? And uh, we ended up getting 17 signatures in a couple, like in a month or so. And based off of that, we figured out that the response is pretty high. We might have talked to like 20 businesses and 17 of them signed. Wow. So yeah, it's, good. Well, it's kind of a no-brainer. I mean, honestly, yeah. it's a great idea. Yeah. That what people go through to hire somebody is is a lot, and if you can, you know, right, put two, two, you know, one, two, one all of them the, together. All, you all the talks I've had with, with, especially with the Western Golf Association, like literally, it's just complaining, complaining, complaining about how long it takes to hire hire someone. So we're like, all right, that sounds like, I mean, about the biggest smile on my face. You know, like, oh, it's, it's actually starting to work. So. Is there a minimum subscription? So it's $25 a month at the professional level. That's your ultimate goal. Yeah, that would be a the, year. The, the the minimum year. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Hey, Sikander, could you go over your SAM again, please? The SAM. So um, our total addressable market would be around 30 million, and that's the bus businesses all across America who specifically hire a majority of teenagers, as well as uh, busy adults who have dual working households who make above a certain income level to where they have the ability to use their app. So 1.2 million would be a combination of businesses and, and Yes, and, yeah, just adults. on the uh, Illinois scale. Did you talk to you referencing their high school guidance counselors if they're another portal for you? Did anybody talk to them? Did any feedback from them or just companies? Uh, we did not personally talk yeah. to them, but they did say that right now they do they do uh, talk to kids about job opportunities. That's one of the things they do. Kids go to them and they say, you know, right. we have this opening yeah. and this. So we just thought it would be a good yeah. way to yeah. reach out to many kids. It would be a lot easier if instead. I mean, the guidance counselor are trying to find a job for them. You just say, here, there's an app you can use. It's much more simple and convenient for the kids, too. I know personally, just going on, on an app and, I mean, go, we go on hundreds of apps a day and just going on one app, especially if we're talking like, like a job, which we, we, want, we, I mean, we want money as well. And, and I mean, and also there are a lot of seasonal jobs, which our jobs aren't, don't, you know, they don't, they're not permanent, they're not, they're not concrete, they, they change, like, I mean, I could be a, a lifeguard one summer, and then, and with the odd tasks, I could be shoveling. I could be shoveling snow. How do you handle? Um, who, who, well, let's say any one of your going to school in a year from now, but you're on there, uh, and you didn't take yourself off, and I'm looking for somebody to shovel my driveway, and I picked you. Or you probably follow how up. Do you, how do you flush it out so that your dad is? We'll, we'll probably we would probably follow follow up with with confirmation if there's if they're active or not. And the way it you, works Yeah, is you post it and then if someone can, they'll, they'll accept it. Yeah. So we're not matching them on it. We're letting you post on our website and then if someone's free or able to do this, they will accept the task. Yeah, so he's the greatest driveway shoveler in the world and he's shoveling my driveway so he can't shovel anyone else. So how do we remove him from that? So, okay, so what it is, is it's a live feed and then the kids would see it, and if they're available and able to do it, they would click on it and say apply. So if they apply, but can they pull their resume off when they get a job? 
Um, if they wish to deactivate their account, they can, but otherwise they wouldn't be active applying for other jobs if they're already so doing something. The, the employer never goes looking for resumes, it's only applying? Yes. Okay. That you know, one thing you guys that helps. That cleans that whole yeah. thing out. One thing you guys got to be careful about is it's one thing when you're contracting employees to a yeah, business, yeah. but when you contract the employees, your business now, when you contract yeah. employees to a to an individual, if that individual gets hurt, yeah. you're going to be in big trouble. You need to look at workers' compensation insurance, which is going to be expensive. And I think you gotta to this to the point where we were trying to get at. You gotta look at it the other way because you're, if I understood you correctly, you're creating a path that the jobs are posted and the students apply for the jobs. Yeah. yeah. But what if the jobs are out there and the employer wants to go find people to talk to? Then you have another market in there that you got to think about because that's equally as valuable. WGA is looking for. Complete people. Who are these people? The challenge I see with that is uh, high school students keeping it fresh. They've gone to college. How are they going to remember to go to your app to pull their resume? Pull it off. Yeah. That's, I like it better currently. I mean, I agree with Carl, but I think you got a monster by the tail to, to try to get you kids to clean your resumes up and get them off. It's almost like you're going to put their resume out there. Unless to some extent. Unless to some extent. Really, they want the job description. What's that? An automatic expiration date. Yeah, I, I, I was thinking by, I mean, having insert, not necessarily an email, but having a phone number and following up with them every uh, a specific amount of time, like a month or a couple, a couple, a couple of weeks. And like, are you still interested in fast tax? Do you have to press, I mean, this number or not to, to make well, sure if you are? How, how do they scale? So it's monster.com, that's what they do, right? But they just list the jobs, right? Yeah. Yeah, or ladders. They yeah. list the jobs. Yeah, they don't have a workforce. Yeah. Yeah. See, but what, what, what you went to a company with a very appealing aspect, which was, I've got 70 kids ready to work, which is very different than saying, I'm going to give you a platform to post your classified ads. You know, because they, they can do that anywhere. Yeah, it's the fact that you had 70 kids is what made that yeah. appealing, so you don't want to lose that aspect of it. Just Curious, at this MVP stage, you said you had 17 employers that said they would be interested. You have seven yeah. kids. Have you manually matched employers with student needs? Or we haven't yet, just because we thought of this business idea. We first focused on the whole MVP on the adults, realizing tasks were coming in and people weren't as comfortable doing that. So then the last three weeks, we transformed our idea, shifted, and decided to go with this route. Well. I think that that route's cool. your unique, yeah. your unique yeah. value proposition. Then we had imagine all the college kids coming home looking for work. Right. So, I mean, it, you're look, you're almost like temporary employment in a way. <coughs> Who's your mentor? Uh, John Roberts. John Roberts. Yeah, I'd almost suggest to you to do it manually in the interim because this is the hiring right now. season right now. Yeah. yeah. And you get a feel for how especially many WGA, to it. WGA, and especially yes. with our with our art tests too, with our art tests too on I mean, spring spring cleaning. There's uh, like gardening. I know at my house right at my house right now we're carrying mulch, cutting lawns, so much yes. stuff. Yes. Maybe can't wait to go. <laughs> <laughs> this is a season. This right is now, season. Yeah. What are some examples of the 17 businesses other than the golf? Uh, Wall Street is one of them. We have a. Uh, Jimmy John's, we have, what else do we have? We have the list yeah, right, we have the list right now. Because that's a, a marketable fact for your presentation. Yeah. Yeah, that there's that you've got real interest from the right. company. Because right. yeah. they're not yeah. 17 of your relatives. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. I agree. Yeah. 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 Yeah.